That being said, the UK British champion and Steve Cook coming out also equally intent. Expect these two to run into each other, Malcolm. Nice round kick from Steve Cook. He's a very fluid fighter, very good kickboxer. And he's a pressure fighter. He likes to move in and out, pick his techniques and work hard. Yeah, he's a legit black belt on kickboxing. Also got a good Taekwondo background as well. So Yeah, I think he's blue belt now in Taekwondo. Yep, that's correct. And in this case... I feel like he's going to probably try and stay on his bike and not get cornered early by the Moroccan fighter. That's right. It's a good type of testing out process, but he's a very sharp, fast fighter as well, Steve Cook. And Hamani, I'm sure, has been told by his corner, you've got to stop him. We're not going to get the result here. Yeah, Sufayan Hamani keeping a nice high guard and look for him to unload with single power shots. A little probing, right round kick. And Cook legitimately could switch from Southpaw to Orthodox very easily. And looking to counter, as you saw there, Lourdes Manon and Cantor. Something we've been working on over the last year. He's always had immense talent, but over the last year, I know his corner have been working on make them miss and make them pay. He yeah, used but to make he, them miss a lot, but he didn't make them pay as much. Now he does. Yeah, but he got clipped there a little bit by Sufayan. And you can see the stance swapping happening a little bit, I think. Sufan may start to loosen up a little bit here, having gauged the timing in the opening minute. Good roundhouse off that rear leg from Cook. Ducks the replies from Hamani. Looks to work the body on the inside. Good clean break from both these guys. And Sufayan was actually getting encouraged to box in the corner by his corner. I thought that was interesting. Oh, good body shot there, roundhouse from Cook. But it was crazy to think when he had himself backed up against the rope, his corner was saying, look, box, 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 get busy. You know, they know that they've got to be dominant here tonight. Well, I thought that was a nice tidy opening, but clear daylight between them in the opening round. Sharp technique from the blue corner and the pocket rocket. Stephen Cook, do you agree, Chris? Yeah, pocket rocket doing real good there. You know, he landed probably the most significant strikes with the legs. I'd say that was the biggest difference. He also backed off Sufayan in the last 30 seconds there very effectively. So... Good patience, good calculation from Steve Cook.
so round two of a potential 12 and Cook starts with the side kick. Showing and off that. Chris, he's a very fluid kickboxer, very light on his feet. Yeah, I was gonna say, showing off that Taekwondo style. Nice, keep mobile, gotta keep those hands up though. You'll notice the guard difference, it's a very stark difference in the way that Sufian holds his guard very high. And you can see Cook trying to lure Hermani on and then counter sharply. That's the big mantra in kickboxing, make them miss, make them pay. Only half the job done otherwise. Yeah, Sufian looking to aim small and miss small though. A little less busy, Cook starting to ooze that volume as we've seen even in round one. That was probably the difference on the scorecards. Nice. Again, that roundhouse, he brings out a change out very easily. Yeah, very nice stuff from Steve Cook there. And the crowd shouting his name. Well, this training camp for him has been the most intense of his life. He really does want this title. He wants to be a legitimate world champion. He is. This training camp has been a beast for him. Yeah, and obviously coming off a stoppage victory in his British title bout. So, you know, you're seeing two national champs go out of here. Obviously, Sufan's a Belgian champ. So, I feel like, you know, over halfway through this round, though, Sufan hasn't really thrown much. And it's those combinations from Cook that he snaps out. The problem is he's probably trying to look for that knockout shot. And the danger of that being that you don't land anything significant and then time runs out, you're down on the scorecards. And it's happening in this round as well. He's doing a lot of stalking. But Cook then takes the wind away from him. Brilliant job by Steve Cook and whipping that body kick and then connecting with another right in due fashion. I love how he swaps from leg to leg. He's got so much dexterity in his posture. And at the moment, he's frustrating and teasing Sufayan. Yeah, he was teasing him with that lead, lead leg side kick and then obviously came in with a rear round kick. So, But Sufayan hanging in there. He's staying patient. He's got a lot of time to work with. I'll give him that. The danger of it is, though, he's probably two rounds down on the scorecard now. I agree with you totally, Chris. Good crisp work from Steve Cook. So round three of 12, and at this precise moment in time, Cook's body language says it all. He just did a switch scissor kick there. Yeah, we continue with really more of the same, but Sufayn looks very determined here. I mean, obviously, his coaching staff... Oh, he looks rough in a powerhouse. I was going to say, they were encouraging between the round to really turn it on now, I think, and we've I seen that. I really think, Chris, that Cookie will have to stay on his bike and stay this focused and sharp throughout the 12 rounds. And stay disciplined too, because the moment he doesn't go mobile, he might go to sleep. And Sufayan, nice, dirty boxing there, moving away as actually Cook came in on him. And again, Cook trying to lure him on, then move him away. And in a way, he's already breaking up Hamani's rhythm by just doing that. Yeah, nice how he raises that leg and then does that scissor technique. It's so neat to see, the, like I said, the balance that he's got. He's a very great athlete. Little adjustment there, the shin and in step. <clears throat> what he's done is sort of mesmerize Hermani and get him into a routine of coming forward and then getting caught before he can let his work go. Yeah, that'll be certainly the most effective way to land strikes and oh, win rounds. But he's got to be worried about that heavy leather coming in there from Sufayin. And you can see what Cook's doing. He's waiting, look. He wants Hermani to come forward. Make him miss and then counter. And they're calling for Sufayn Hamani to start using his boxing a little bit more to set up shots. And I'd agree with that because obviously if you throw single shots too much, it becomes a bit too predictable, a bit too visible. And this is what's happening for him. 
at the moment he's being lured in by Crook and he's the only way of putting it Chris is he is falling for it with less than 30 seconds to go you know a couple of nice solid kicks coming in there to the body though and that's back to Cook off now that he's tasted the power I think but then Sufiane hesitates and I think that's a mistake if this is not sure what Cook's going to do next and there you go he's in he's out he scores his points Big round. You know, Sufayin started to sort of target what he believed was going to be punching his ticket to success. And obviously Cook took it, ran away, but then came back and hit him harder. So an interesting precedent now moving into this fourth round. Especially being nearly, you know, obviously coming in to be in a third way into this fight, Malk. around for Chris and Amani needs a real change of tactic here. Yeah, there was grave concern there, I believe. And, and I uh, I don't speak French, but head coach in charge there urging him to now, I think, get down to business and get a little more serious with how he can take Cook and, more importantly, I believe, cut Cook's movement down. That's the thing. He's got to start dictating the pace himself. He's lured on and then Cook does what he wants when the man's off balance. And you can see Cook luring him on here. I'm convinced that Sufiyin's got the precision to make that happen, you know, but he's got to be more tactical in how he employs that strategy. So. That's right. That's better from him. He's obviously powerful. You can see he looks a powerhouse at the way. And there we go. Better from him. Oh! To do. Big right hand. That was the biggest shot of the fight for him. That snapped back the head of Steve Cook. Tough to see how flush it landed, but it did land. Well, he stepped up again, and he needs to do this consistently. Now Cook looking to respond the game, which is the right tactic. But Cook staying bouncy, staying mobile, keep moving. Nice right round as he stepped up again, Hamani made it more of a fight in this round. Definitely, I like the way Cooks responded so that Hamani doesn't get away with it. But you can now see the danger this man really possesses here. And Hamani going in big time with four or five left and right hook alternating back and forth. But Cook is weathering the storm, and he's also moving away from the dangerous weather patterns. And he comes back with his own flurries as well, as he does here, look. Oh, misses with that kick. Hamani has got to punish him when he does that. Yeah, see, Hamani was on him, but he's got to stay on him, you know? And in a moment, now, who's, oh, did he spit the rubber? Yeah, he spat the uh, gum shield out. Was that a connection, or was that him just spitting it out? Oh, he's going to be sick. I'll tell you, this man's not as fit as he should be for a 12-round fight. And the gum shield came out there. I don't know if that was from the shot. I couldn't quite tell from my angle. I have to get a replay on that. And with a quick cleaning of the gum shield. Referee in charge here will return that to the mouth of Sufayin. But that's huge, Malk. Yes, just when he came right back into this. Less than 10 Cook, seconds here. Oh, Cook countered nicely, but Hamani looks to throw strongly again. And you feel he's a bit <laughs> he's a bit of a roughhouse on the inside, but he negated all his own good work there. Man, with the temperature rising here at Fenmen Fight Night, it's very clear what's on the table and what's on at stake. This is getting intense, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see what happens in round five. To clarify, our referee has just said he deducted the point and gave the count because he had already been sick in his corner between rounds, as you quite rightly saw, Chris. And then he said he purposely spat the gum shield out to try and be sick again. He says so that the intentful kick spitting the gum shield out to be sick, he had to give it the count. 
And as our referee in charge brings these two back together, it's happening, it's alive, it's Fenman fight time. Now Chris, if he's tried to be sick twice, what does that say about his condition and his cardio? You know, it's difficult to say. Obviously, it's a very intense fight. You're, you know, in the ultimate final fight of the evening. A lot on the line. That being said, Cook has really pressured him and kept him busy, kept him working. Perhaps pushed him to his limit. Could be nerves, could be cardio. Could be the thing I was going to say, Chris, maybe it's nerves more so than the cardio. Yeah. But Cook still looking very lively, and Sufain still looking very determined. So it's an interesting storyline. So Cook still looks fresh. He's still light on his feet. I think he has to remain focused because Amani, I still think, carries raw power. And Hamani keeping that guard high. But I don't think those single kicks are going to work because Cook sees those coming a mile away. Yeah, he's just blocking them with elbows. And I mean, it's one thing to possess the power, but you also got to employ it to make it work. You got to make it not only score, but you got to make it also count. And in this case, Cook's able to block those and then move away and then come in with his own stuff. So. Scissor kick just out of range this time. Front push kick, then the work. And this is what Armani allows Cook to do, and he can't afford to do that. And then he moves away, and you've got to set up all over again, Chris. Yeah, you got to fire back when fired upon. And Sufayin Hamani now finding himself with his back up against the ropes and jumping in for the right body kick is Cook. And Cook is a really clever game plan at the moment for straighting Hamani, scoring his points, moving away, forcing the man, to, and then beating him. As he goes to set up, he throws the right hand. Fascinating to see the way that he changes gears from one step to the next. Steve Cook is very, very tactile. Yes, he's been very fluid tonight. Nice movement, nice awareness, good shot choice. Brilliant shot choice. You know, especially when you're looking down the pipe against a dangerous guy like Sufayin. Takes a brave man to go in there and duke it out for a world title. And it's just been incredible action. A very rewarding, special, fitting title bout. So what can Amani do, Chris? I, I think he's been lured almost hypnotically by Cook into fighting Cook's game plan. With someone that fluid, if I was in his school, I'd be tempted to say, look, cut the range down, rough him up, fight the boxer. And, and in my opinion, you know, you, you've got to use some footwork to get there. If he can cut Cook's movement off without being so aggressive that he A, wastes energy, or B, gets caught by something worse, he'll find himself in a more favorable position to unload that heavy offense that he possesses. The problem is if he gets carried away with chasing Cook down and not thinking about how he's going to unload properly, he could find himself on the wrong end of a decision at the end of the night. Well, well the problem, as he, as he rightly said, Chris, is he's chasing him down and then letting Cook get the jump on him. This is the problem. Yet we continue moving into what will be the halfway point of this bout. It's Cook versus Hamani in world title action. So Hamani looking to force the pace now, but I hate to use the term, but he's looking predictable, Chris. Yeah, with those single shots, as we highlighted from the very beginning, you know, you got to be real careful in the way that you set things up, especially when you're coming into an elite level world title fight. You know, Cook, obviously being a multi sport athlete as well, is going to be completely wise. There we go, that's good stuff, but look at the way Cook comes back. Yes, he tucks up tight, comes back. But you know what? This is the best thing Hamani can do, draw Cook into a brawl. Yep. Yes, Cook responded well, but I still feel that's Hamani's best chance. Yep, as you were saying, how to fight the boxer, you got to brawl a boxer. Cook responded well on this occasion, but I would not change tactic. I would ask him, can you keep doing this? Can you keep responding like this? Mm, yeah, especially when you look at the way that he almost made his punk puke a couple of times. So keep pushing the right buttons would be my advice. But again, Cook takes the sting out. He lets Hamani come forward and then counters before he's been hit. And bullies him into the corner there, right in front of his own teammates. It's the pocket rocket. The fuse has been lit. Hamani looking frustrated. You feel the power. You feel the raw energy within him. But it's not been allowed to have any fruit whatsoever. Yeah, and, you know, credit to Cook. 
You that can't. Was a great game plan, Chris. You're dead right. Yeah, it's been mentally and I think physically draining on his opponent. You know, we can't take anything away from Hawani. Clearly, he's got the tool sets. Clearly, he has the ability to make big things happen very quickly. But Cook's been able to sort of diffuse that and tame the beast. Well, he counters before he's been hit, just like that. Wait, he sees the man set himself, then jumps the gun. Yeah, I like how he went southpaw with a, with a right cross. You know, it's nice to see guys come off a, what's a longer punch to then become a shorter punch. From right cross to right jab, Cook did a beautiful job there in the end of that round, and uh, maybe running away with this fight, but you can look at the corner work here from the Belgian team, Malcolm, and there's no doubt as to the intensity that they bring to the table and the toughness. It also says how they feel the scoring's going. Seven of twelve, Chris, and it's a simple equation. Can Cook keep up this focus, this movement, this energy, this cardio for the second half of the fight? Yeah, it's a delicate balance, really, when you've got a guy like that on the other end who's always dangerous. And Sufayin. Last thing that goes is your punch. And you could hear the shouts of "Get focused." Would be the best way I could translate it from the uh, the Belgian crew there. You know, they were saying, "Look, you need to really visualize." I could see it from the hand movements. Visualize attack. Think first and then fire afterwards. Don't just fire blindly. Just because Cook countered him when he came forward in a bullish mood like that doesn't mean he's wrong. Keep doing it. See if you can crack him. See how many times he can counter. That for me at the moment is Romani's only chance. Nice handiwork from Cook there in the corner. You know, he'd had a nice right uppercut that connected. Cook staying busy. You know, um, clearly very well prepared as you said you know it's been one of his toughest camps ever and you know the difference between a champ and a contender is what you're willing to put into it oh he's getting very confident now missed with the 360 then followed up with the roundhouse and each time he does that he stops Amani scoring points now I close this gap quick throw the leather make Cook respond again it only takes one punch to scramble someone mm. with the bright light shining and all of this high octane atmosphere here it's got to be a case now where Sufayin really needs to make something happen because one can make the arguments Malky's he's down on the scorecards that was a good shot to the midsection from him he needs to double up this is what he needs to do there we go nice I like that he came in he was going to clinch but he should have broke cleanly and then hit some punches rather than grab double underhooks and hold on for dear life and Cook coming in again but I think Romani is his eye cut were they saying it's a clash of heads I didn't see the head no clash. no 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 head clash at all not from what I could see at all and if he is bleeding, it's from a clean cook shot then. And you can see Cook is, is supremely confident at the moment. I like how Hamani is now starting to show a little bit more movement there, you know, a little bit of fainting and faking. So eight of twelve, and there could still be a sting in this tail. But look, look, see so look at that. Oh. The walk first, then the Superman punch. Big right and hand. Absolutely, for Sufayin, and you know, it's an interesting precedent, Malcolm. Sort of like if this was a game of poker, we've had the hand, we've sort of seen the flop. We're running down the river now, and it's sort of on the home stretch now for Cook, especially with that big knockdown. Well, he's saying to him, "You don't know how to handle me. You don't know what I'm going to do next." And it was the crab walk, a Superman jump, and it landed like you dream of when you're sparring, when you're training. Categorically, especially early in the round, that's a big, big, big factor now for Steve Cook. But Sufayin looks still pretty good. I don't think it rocked him too much. But Chris, we talk about the mental game as much as the physical. Steve Cook is, is breaking this man mentally in terms of frustration. You can see the body language. His corner looked over and he looked over and said, should I have got an eight count? Am I being hard done by? All these things are coming into your thinking because you're frustrated and you know you're behind. And when you've got two fine athletes that, that you know are clearly very well physically, uh, well physically conditioned, that mental aspect 
can sometimes be the, the denominator that makes a difference. You know, Sofian his kicks are powerful, as you said, he throws them cleanly. But I think you're not picking up on what you said, Chris. He throws them so that Cook can easily stop them. Yeah, I mean, look at the way Cook just jumped into that back kick. He went 180 on it too, which is pretty cool. A lot of guys go 360 when they jump, and he He's went the other. games with him, Chris, and it's working. Yeah, it's big, working now. big time. So, Fian, you get the feeling is relying on a big punch, but doesn't really want to be there anymore. And Sufayin, a little bit hesitant here. I think he's really got to go after Cook now. There we go. Nice right body kick. That landed pretty nicely here for him. But he's got to put the pressure on. He must know how far he's behind. What have you got to lose now? One strike is not enough. He's and eight rounds down, Chris. And you know what? If you're only going to throw one strike, it should be one that backs him off, cuts off the distance, and then obviously allows him to come in and land more. Sufayin has got to go for it now, Malcolm. He's, he's got two counts against him. He's losing the rounds without the counts. Steve Cook riding the tidal wave here in the Fenman main event. Sufayin has got his work cut out for him, Malk. If I was in Hermani's corner now, I'd go in there and say, you must rough him up. Do you know what? I don't care if you lose a point because a stray forearm or elbow head gets in there. Rough that man up. Do something. And it's got the moment... It's so predictable for Cookie. It's got to be multiple punch combinations. It's got to be not one or two followed by a kick. It's got to be like five, six punch combinations followed by multiple kicks. Sufayin has it's to... It's cliche, Chris, when Rocky in the Rocky movies <laughs> where he's picked up by Mr. T and thrown back in the corner to keep him there. Hamani's got to do something like that. If he loses, what, what does it matter if he loses another point? Doesn't matter at all. He's got to finish this fight. And here we go. And so far, you've got to say it's been a masterclass by Cook. Yeah, precision game plan. I mean, he's really followed the blueprint for victory against a guy like, you know, Sue Fain, who's real aggressive. So Cook doing a great job of using ring mastery. And again, Cook taking those on the gloves, waiting his time. It's round nine, so he's getting a bit of a breather. He's I like his second win back. Yeah, I like how he parries some of those strikes, too. Cook calling his man on. Do you see that? Called him on and then replied. Yeah. Playing mind games with him. And very aware of how the distance sort of manipulates from moving forward to backwards. Oh, sexy, that one. That was brilliant. And he's just saying to him, I've, I've got the answers. I'm messing with you. But the difference being that Sufayn does not have a reply at this point. And now he's hesitant. This is what it does for you. Look, he's not really... How can he be here? You can't afford feints at this time in the game when you're already eight rounds down. Yeah, you got to stop looking and start doing a nice little flurry there against the corner, but then he sort of backs off. Man, I'd be on him so hard right now. I'd go for it. Maybe he's hurt, Malk. Maybe, obviously, like we said earlier, with the, you know, the getting sick in the corner, it may be a point where his muscles are seizing up. Maybe he's got some, some um, cramping going on. Right. We don't know behind the scenes. Maybe he had to make weight. We got all these things to be a factor. But that's three unanswered body shots from Cook now as well. And that's another way to sort of eat the life and cardio out of your opponent by landing those flush. Bricking home. And all the time they're stuck in this corner like this. The clock's ticking on Hamani. Yeah, I know. It's interesting to see how Cook sort of turns it on and turns it off and just... Cook does his work, leans on him, pulls him in close. Look, look. Frustrate, frustrate. And punches as hard as concrete there at the end of the round. For Cook, the crowd roars with approval, showing their appreciation for the English fighter. What a great round. left Chris and it will really need a lapse in concentration from Cook 
to turn this on its head. Yeah, but you know. Cook to lose now, it's as simple as that. Yeah, but both these guys have a lot to fight for. Obviously, Cook to keep the momentum. Sufain to try and take advantage somewhere. But look at Cook, he's actually stepping up the gear now. And this is clever work. Keep it close, keep it safe. And I could literally feel the sweat as both fighters connect on each other, landing here at commentary position. It's a testament to the intensity and uh, worksmanship performance from both these guys. But it's just been Cook who's been that much more effective, I think. And you know what? At this moment, Chris, it's tempting to say, people say that was a great fight. No, it's not. It's a great performance. A brilliant performance from Steve Cook. Big shots from Steve Cook right here in and the corner. He does. He crowds in. It's not nice. It's not pretty, but I've scored four. And now try and hit me when I'm right in here tight to you. My head tucked down. It's so... Tactic, Chris. Yeah, it's impossible to get the leverage that you need to land a power shot. There's one of our guys who's a power striker like Su Fain, so... But he's got to stop leaning with those single kicks. You know, he needs to pump the jab. He needs to make Cook respect that and then flurry on other additional combinations from that. He has to be a dervish, Chris. He has to be in there and he has to go for broke. Because that's the only way this whole thing is going to change. He felt that body shot. And I think that's what makes him a little bit more hesitant to try to mount that invasion, try to mount that assault. Cook just really knowing exactly when he needs to try to make Sufain respect him enough so that he won't get countered. Oh, there you go. Fake the double side kick landed with the rear round dash. Now what's Sufain going to do from here? He's in close. He's even got his own guard tucked up. Steve knows he can throw the body shots because the guard hasn't come down. And Steve doesn't have anything to worry about either afterwards. So, again, more effective scoring with less to worry about after he disengages. And not much time to go. That's it. It's a masterclass at the moment. It's not a great fight. It's a masterclass from a young fighter coming into maturity. And you can see Steve Cook coming back there to the corner. He nods. He's grooving to the music here. He knows that he's on his way to a world title victory. What will Sufayan do in these last two rounds? Two rounds to go, Chris, and I'd like to see Hamani. He banged his gloves together. Yeah, get angry. As Clint Eastwood said in Josie Wales, get mad dog crazy and for two rounds try and blitz him out of there. Yeah, he needs to have a, a, a little bit more aggressive attitude. He needs an attitude adjustment, quite frankly. It's not often I say that in a fight. Oh, and the body shots from Cook. He closes the gap, takes the man's power away from him and tucks him close. And Cook doing a great job here. And all the time we're here, he's lessening the chance of one big shot turning things around. That's exactly what I was going to say. He's doing a great job of negating Sufayin's attack there. Whilst being in a, you know, arguably a poor position. And he's conserved energy when he needs to. He knows when he's not under pressure. Like now, that little fake that keeps Sufayin away. And he's weak the gas. And then watch him go after him and again in there a second. Yep. Way jumping front leg side kick, but then goes right back to orthodox. Going for a hook kick there. Interesting stuff from Steve Cook. Very talented fighter, Malcolm, and we're really seeing a, a coming out party on this world title oh, yeah, challenge. He's come of age tonight. He always had the talent. He's always been an exciting fighter with huge potential, but you're seeing this potential translate now into reality. And I'm certain that Sufiyan Hamani has that as well. You know, he's a young fighter. He's going to come in here. He's going to learn from this tonight and what it takes to come and perform at the highest level. Oh, there's the body shot again. The little body shuffle. And then again, look how tight he is. What can Sufian do from there? Look where, where Cook's head is. Then he does the jump. That's how confident he is now. And uh, Cook showing why he's a wizard. But Sufayin holding on for a clinch. He's going to look for a sweep again in a minute, I reckon. I mean, the focus 
the stamina of Cook. This training camp has really worked wonders for him. Big time again, you know. The thing about the training camp, you can peak too early or peak too late. This has been perfect for him because you've seen where he's been here tonight. Yeah, it's been a flawless performance really so far. And, you know, at over 20 minutes deep into this world title bout, Cook's still showing off his wide array of skills. The final round, Chris. Sofiane, he needs a knockout. Otherwise, this is almost a total, well, it will be a total shutout in my card for Steve Pocket Rocket Cook. And look, he's beginning now to showboat and say, come on, that's how confident I am. Steve Pocket Rocket Cook getting a standing ovation here from the English fans. Two more minutes for Sufayane to work with, however. And again, look how clever he is, keeping it close here, keeping it tight. Does his flamboyant work, then ties his man up. And Steve Cook being very calculated as usual, as we've seen the pattern evolve in his performance tonight. I like how he's... That crab walk, and Sufayan doesn't know what to do with it. Yeah, I was going to say, I like how he does that. It sort of like confuses and throws off Sufayan. Nice hook kick attack off the lead leg from Steve Cook. And again, the kicks from Sofian are actually coming low now. Steve Cook's having to check them at knee level. But his guard's still high, you know. I mean, a lot of guys will droop their guard when they become exhausted. Good round kick from Amani. Cook smiles at him, but it's the best shot of the fight so far from Amani in the 12th. And now Cook gets his body shots going again. Oh, man. Jump kick. I love the way that Cook engages and disengages, you know. It's been vital in this back, Chris. You're right. This has been the key to it. Brilliant stuff here moving into the last 30 seconds or so of this fight and the crowd chanting clapping and he comes forward again with those body shots Amani's had no answer to this young man tonight and just tons of energy from Steve Cook you know really igniting the fire in his feet from the support he's had in the hometown crowd and Sufayin is still looking to try to land something big but just being, ten seconds now, Chris. Yeah, he's just, he just, he's just been overwhelmed by Cook so far, though. And, you know, take nothing away from Sufayim, but Cook just a bit too much tonight.
What's that?